Uh, my Lord. So, Lady Mandeville's speech, I should begin by declaring a couple of non-interests. I'm not a hereditary peer. Uh, I'm not a landowner, unless you count a small garden in the Hampshire Berkshire borders about half the size of this chamber. Uh, and I'm not a trophy hunter, nor do I oppose the import of all trophies. But I do want to speak in support of my noble friend, the Earl of Caithness, Caithness's amendment. Uh, and I'd like to, to, to go back to where he started, namely with the Markle. The screw horned goats, uh, Capra Falconeri, the national animal of Pakistan. I was lucky enough last year to, to see the extraordinary landscapes where these animals live in Gilgit Baltistan, uh, in Chitral, and in Hamza. There's isolated pockets of them in Afghanistan and India. In fact, they were thought to be extinct in India as recently as the 90s, and they were on the most extreme category of UN Extinction Watch uh, as recently as the end of the last century, until their numbers were revived through the carefully targeted sale of a very small number of hunting licenses, the revenue from which is reserved to local communities, who then have every incentive to preserve habitats and who effectively are turned into so many gameskeepers and ensure that no animal except the elderly post-reproductive males marked for culling are in danger. And the result of, of that change is that they have rebounded immensely. Now, there is a, it, it is not the case that, a, uh, uh, that trophy hunting is always a tool of conservation. And this is why I'm saying I'm not against the whole concept, but I do want to speak in favour of the distinction that this amendment makes. So to give a, a, an obvious example from the other side, there is no evidence that the ban on whale hunting has had a detrimental effect. Uh, on the contrary, the, the recovery of whale numbers has been one of the unremarked miracles of the last couple of decades. We've seen a, a, an amazing uh, bounce back in the number of humpbacks, uh, 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 of uh, bowheads, although sadly not yet of blue or of grey whales. E even there, there is a habitat aspect to this. A lot of them are killed because they, they swallow fishing gear that's been discarded or in clashes with vessels. But I'm not going to argue, and I, I don't think anyone else is, that a hunting ban there is ineffective or that a trophy ban uh, would make a difference. But where we are talking about habitats, it's vital to give local people an incentive to conserve that yeah, habitat. Yeah. And I can't put it better than my noble friend, the Lord Lucas, just did. It's very easy for us, at a distance, to be sentimental about lions and tigers and elephants and so on, because we don't have to live next to them. Without any incentive to preserve their numbers, local people will very naturally see them as, at the very least, competitors for resources, but also as a danger. And without the right incentives, they'll have every reason to hunt them to extinction, as I'm afraid human populations have done to large mammals on every continent, going back uh, to our hunter-gatherer days. And so this amendment draws a distinction and gives, uh, gives us a last-ditch power, if you like, gives the Secretary of State a, uh, a last-ditch power to decide where there has been or where there would be an unintended consequence for conservation. By the way, I'd love, to, I'd love to have a general power to stop unintended consequences of legislation. And almost always you get the most unintended consequences from bills that have been passed in response to some public campaign. Uh, people haven't thought through all of the implications, and we hear exactly the arguments that we heard tonight, that the public demands this. Well, if you're presented as a general proposition with the idea that we shouldn't uh, go and, and kill magnificent animals, of course everyone's going to agree with that. I would agree with that. I hope everyone would, right? But we are looking at, uh, we're looking at ways in which to modify this legislation so as not to have a detrimental effect on conservation. Uh, I, I don't want to be accused of filibustering, so I'll keep this very brief. I'll just close by saying that, as I understand it, that is precisely the reason that we exist here as a second chamber. Yeah. What function do we have if not to act as a break on the necessary radicalism of the popularly elected House? We have the privilege, being here, to look beyond headlines and to consider in full the implications and the potential unintended consequences of laws that have been drafted in a knee-jerk way. This legislation is precisely an example of such lawmaking, and therefore it seems to me the proper role of this chamber to approve it 
uh, and to take out the parts of it that would have the most harmful impacts. Yeah.